So this is a quick video where I just show you how to plot stress strain graph based on a Dirichlet boundary condition. This is a common vital condition you use quite a lot when you're doing RVE modeling of different materials. So let's sit back and relax as we get started with this video. So as we get started, so we're going to run through some of the theories around the Richley boundary condition and its use in setting up a model and how you can from there generate a stress strain graph. So if we look at what we see here, that's a voided steel material. So it's got a dimension of 100 by 100 and what you see as little white dots on the sample are basically the voids. So what we are going to do here is that we're going to impose a uniaxial tensile testing on the model. So it starts first by holding the base of this model and holding the back end of this model and then we uh, identify the front set of this material locate a reference point in the material apply our load directly on that reference point but because this reference point is away from the sample we are going to make a connection between the reference point and the surface of interest which is here so we're going to use a kinematical constraint to make that link and this is what i'm using representing in this instance as a Dirichlet star boundary condition where you are not applying directly onto the sample but away from the sample and using kinematic constraints you make that link what would that kinematic constraint equation look like so this is what we see here so what it's saying basically is that the x deformation of the front set nodes on this material must be equal to the deformation of the reference point node in that x-axis so what is going on here is that we are assigning the degree of freedom the kinematic behavior of the node at the reference point which is a single node we are assigning its behavior to all the nodes that are on the x front set so if we are moving it by one millimeter every node they will move by one millimeter which again is a principle of a Dirichlet boundary condition so because we need to specify the, the equation in a canonical form so we write it in this way which this minus that equals zero and within abacus which is a software we're going to use for this analysis there is a command which is called the star command which you can then use to in, impose this condition on the behavior of the system so just to know some of the things so what we have as number two here is the number of times in this equation and the last plus one and minus one column is basically the coefficients of the type of equation so we've got plus one here and minus one there and then what you've got here our p set here is the nodal set so our p set is a single node and then x front set basically all the nodes on that surface so this is how you make that kinematical constraint and then the final point the degree of freedom for which we are interested in this instance is in the one axis so you need to also do it for two axes if it's a 2d problem if it's a 3d problem you also need to do it for x y and z which is one two and three material axis for the model so that's how you can set up the kinematical constraint that will pres prescribe a boundary condition to the system in a Dirichlet. but that's not enough what we need to do is to generate stress and strain data from that so what do we do so if you look at this model again so essentially what we have is the voided steel material and the prescribed loading so that prescribed loading will have a displacement and then a face which is the face of interest so the cross-sectional area of the face of interest will be necessary we need to ask the simulation to give us the displacement and the force with respect to that reference node so that in the end the surface area of the system would be equal to the width of the material times the height or the depth of the system in this case because it's a 2d problem there is no depth to the solution so we will assume a depth of one we know that in this instance our w is 100 micro and so to get the stress strain data from that so our stress on that phase will be the reaction force divided by the cross-sectional area while the strain will be the displacement of that reference node again divided by the gauge length which is this original RV length of the material so using these two equations we can then extract stress and strain data from that solution so that's what the theory says we're now going to go into abacus so i can show you that and we extract our stress strain data so i've already set up this model i've run the model correctly and the I've generated the stress strain data. If you're interested in the way this model has been set up to generate the sub result we're looking at, then look at this video where I show extensively how you go about doing that. So if I just animate the solution, you could see exactly what we're having. So the edge 
edges were constrained and then there's the return node somewhere around there and it is displacing is carrying along what's happening on the front surface and then we'll see if a uh, doctor damage in the sample as expected so everything there is fine as we would want however we want to get a stress strain data so during the setting up of the model we've already asked for a history variable to be extracted and what the history variable will be the behavior on that node again if you want to learn how i've set this up this video is where i show extensively what i have done here so if we then look at the create xy data so we're tracking the history output so if we continue so the history output we've asked for is the reaction force in the x-axis which is rf1 and the displacement in the one axis i'm pressing down shift control to select both of them and we're extracting it on the reference point node okay and then we'll plot the result so when we plot the result it gives us a nice behavior across the system again it is in terms of force versus time and displacement versus time so we want to get a stress strain data out of that so what do we do so i'll take a moment just to encourage you that if you haven't subscribed to this channel please what are you doing why not just give me a sub on this channel so that you know you'll be informed of contents like this when i make them we are growing quite rapidly on this channel i'm so excited about you know the people that are engaging with the content and with all the comments that you leave me i read them and i try to respond as quickly as i can if you have any comment about what is going on in the channel about things that you would like me to help you with please leave me the comments on the channel i'm more than happy to read them and try and see how i'm going to support my viewers who regularly come to this channel so please do subscribe to the channel do share the contents with your friends you know with people who think will be interested and just continue to keep let's continue growing this community because it's really exciting to have everyone on the channel and so let's get back to the video so we'll go to plugin tools excel utilities from the current plot i'll click ok so what i'm trying to do is i want to extract the raw data of this plot as a function of time and then begin to manipulate that to get our stress strain data okay so what you have here is the actual data in terms of time versus reaction force and time versus displacement so i'm just going to do ctrl a and to select all and ctrl c to copy so i've prepared already a microsoft excel analysis template that we're going to import this data into and then we'll play with that to make sure we have our stress strain data so that's our analysis framework so i'll just paste the data we've copied in there so you can see our time reaction force in x time displacement in in x direction and then will generate the graph for us which is the same graph similar to the graph we found before but this is in terms of stress and strain so what do we do so in terms of getting the force so the force is basically i'm saying okay the force is that data so it's nothing you're doing about it what is the strain the strain is basically the displacement in the x direction divided by the gauge length which is the length of the rv which we specify as 100 here the stress would be the force divided by the width times height which we specified here so and because this data is in newton format and we want to convert it to megapascal i'll divide by one, 1 million pascal so that way we now have our graph in detail if you look more closely on that graph this is sort of what you're going to see showing again the linear elastic onset of yielding and then post youth fracture behavior based on this Trichley boundary condition for this voided steel material so i've also asked it to give me the young's modulus so what is the young's modulus? the young's modulus is the slope of this line and it's coming up to around 200 gigapascal and consider this is steel that has a young's modulus of 210 gigapascal however remember this is a voided material so there will be a reduction in Young's modulus and that's what we see the other quantity we've got here is the absolute maximum stress in the model usually the ultimate tensile stress according to the kind of failure that we see here is coming up around 300 megapascal here there's not a lot of strain happening you get to yield and then the material start failing and so that's also what we see here about 305 megapascal as the yield stress of this material so that's how you can generate a stress strain graph based on a Dirichlet boundary conditioning if you want to understand in detail how i was able to set up this model and run it and generate this simulation that we've used here please look at this video where i explain that in detail Thank you for your interest in this channel and I'll see you in the next video.